I want to share with you just a brief perspective on where I think we are today. Um, like you have been trying to make sense out of COVID, this pandemic, uh, the climate of racial and political tensions that we find ourselves in. And uh, I centered on the text in Romans 8, where Paul asked the question, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, is the answer. None of these things will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. These are God's gifts to us, the love of Christ Jesus. Nothing can separate us from that gift. Even though each of these conditions calls for a response, and in today's context, I would say we are in a context of tribulation, distress, and danger, to say the least. These conditions around uh, uh, disease and, 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 and our, our social unrest have disrupted the church. They've disrupted our celebration of sacraments in different ways, of course, the conference and even the service of ordination. But you know, Scripture is filled with examples of people responding to God in the midst of tribulation, distress, danger, and the rest. Church history is also filled with examples. I was reflecting to myself, uh, do you think during the cruel years of persecution, uh, in those early years, would the church publish an ordination service broadcasting all the world to be here tonight so the new leaders could be, be arrested and killed? The church met in catacombs. The catacomb was a graveyard. Ordination took place in a catacomb. Today, even, tomorrow, we'll be asking faithful servants to come and really in a very, very small setting to shield us from the distress of, uh, of an illness and the danger of a pandemic we will come together, not unlike some churches, uh, uh, some periods of time where our church was martyred, our people were martyred, and ask God through prayer to grant the gift of ordination to the church so that the mission of the church will be fulfilled regardless of these things that threaten to separate us from the love of God. And we know that nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Not tribulation, not distress, not danger, not any of the other stuff. They will not separate us from the love of Christ. And so do not lose hope and do not minimize what you're doing in your community. It's making a difference. The other thing I'd like to share is this. When it comes to the church, I've, I've heard a good deal about rights. We have the right to worship or whatever. Well, I'm not going to dispute that, uh, but I want to change that conversation a little bit. When it comes to the church, it's not about the rights we possess. It's about the gifts we receive. Frankly, I cringe when I hear Christians talking about their personal right to do this, that, or the other, or that they're not going to be coerced to do this, that, or the other. And I'm still learning this thing, but I, when I became a Christian, and I was just a teenager, really, and even before that, most likely, I gave up my rights to have rights. And in the place of me having my rights, I received the gift of God in Jesus Christ. Worship is a gift. It is a gift of God. It is not a right of state. Ordination is a gift of God. It's not a right secured through our efforts. It's not about the rights we possess. It's about the gifts we receive and we've received the gift of creation. We've received the gift of redemption, the gift of salvation, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the church, the gift of ordination, the gift of eternal life. Now, you would be wrong 
if you thought if you hear me saying I don't care about rights I do care about rights part of our calling is to advocate for the rights of others but when I compare rights and gifts I want to chase hard after the gifts of God every time over the rights that I might perceive or mine. In some ways, the polarization of rights and gifts in the church today is an a re-emergence of the debate between faith and works. Both are important, but in the end, we are justified by faith and not by works. And in the end, God lifts us up through his gifts not through our rights. I want to conclude these reflections just with a brief um, remembrance of, uh, of a person who was in social isolation who figured their ministry was completely over. And I'm really talking about somebody we're all aware of the book that he wrote while he was uh, on the Isle of Patmos John, the author of Revelations, or really like the song says, John the Revelator. He was exiled on this island of Patmos, and I could just hear him. If I were there, I'd be thinking, well, I've lost my platform for ministry. I'm not worth anything. God's not going to do anything through me anymore. I've got a socially distance. I can't go to church anymore. I'm an elder in the church. I'm stuck, and my ministry is over because I'm in exile. And yet, in the midst of exile, at the darkest points, God gave him a vision, and he wrote it down. Now, we don't understand all the book of Revelation. I sure don't. Uh, I don't understand COVID either. Do you? But I do understand this. At the depth of tribulation and trouble, in the 13th chapter of Revelation, John makes two observations in light of the context. The first is this. This context calls for patient endurance and faithfulness. And secondly, this context calls for wisdom. So as we leave this annual conference, that's really my call to you. I hope you'll receive the guidance that we give as a gift. Uh, we're not trying to take away anybody's rights. It's not about rights. It's about receiving Jesus and experiencing the gift of God in our lives. That's what it's about. And I pray and I hope that in this day and in this time, uh, when we may feel like we're exiled on that Isle of Patmos, that God speaks even now to somebody saying, I want you to answer the call to ministry. And if you, you just feel that tug of God, and I hope you do, uh, even though we're all separated, many times in the history of the world, God moves when the church is external conditions look the most dire. And we ask, who in the world would want to do that? That's when God calls. It doesn't really matter your age. If you know God's been calling you, I encourage you to, uh, to reach out to our moderators and let them know. Reach out to your superintendent. Reach out to your pastor God's calling, and God's not through with our church. But when we focus on our rights, we look inward. When we focus on our troubles, our tribulation, our distress, we look inward. The call of Jesus is not to just look inward. It's to look around. The call of God is fulfilled not when we look inside ourselves, but when we look around at our neighbor and we say, how can we love you? How can we serve you? The theme verse is so apropos. Look not to your own interests, but look to the interests of others. 
look to the interest of Jesus. I'd like the privilege of praying for us and, uh, and then following that, we will adjourn. I do want you to stay on though, uh, because we have a, 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 a special presentation from the Epworth Villa Choir. And uh, I think that it'll bless your heart as well. Let's pray. God, today we pray that you would forgive us when we look first to our own rights, our own concerns, our own privileges that we think we may have earned. And we forget that we are not in this for us. We are in this because of you. You've given us so many gifts and we take them for granted. We become like the nine who were healed, who forgot to come back and say, thank you. And so Lord, with all the gifts you've given to us today, we want to come back and say, thank you. And we want to say anew, here we are. Um, use us. We open ourselves to you. Fill us again with the gift of your Holy Spirit and give us the courage and the words to speak where there is hurting, where there is injustice, where there is hatred, where there are things that are, are unspeakable. Grant us the courage to follow you and to speak up, not for the rights of ourselves, but for the rights of others who are created in your image. Remind us that as Methodists, our holiness is not just personal, it's not just social. The holiness that you call us to is both personal and social. For this conference, for this church, I give you thanks. For these who have been here to the end, I thank you. I pray for our churches. Spend spread renewal, and may we find the grace and peace that comes in the gift of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. Conference, I thank you. We stand adjourned. I invite you to stay on for the video. <laughs>